Denmark Design Museum has kept the finest collection of uh, Japanese sword ornament, tsuba or brim, for many years. The more you will see them and the more you get to know the history of tsuba, the more fascinated you will be. At the end of the day, of course, tsuba will enrich already very good relations between the Kingdom of Denmark and Japan. So I hope you will enjoy the video and someday you will come and see them in person. Here we have uh, the Japanese sword and this is meant for a demonstration so that you can see what elements it consists of. We have the so-called sword guard, the brim, or in Japanese, the tsuba, which is here. Uh, the tsuba protects the hands from sliding over uh, the sword. Uh, there are different elements uh, connected to the tsuba, which is also part of the collections, because uh, it's possible to have a small dagger on one side and a small needle on the other side, which is also part of uh, the weapon. Um, it's also important to know that uh, the masters or the craftsmen who crafted the sword is completely different people from the ones who did the ornaments, uh, like the tsubas. It was two different professions and it uh, demanded different kinds of skills. So here we have the collection which consists of 719 items. More than 1,000 are the tsubas. And they are arranged and organized in all these drawers, which is like a study collection where you can see and examine them. It has been said about the Halberstadt collection that it is a very fine collection because the tsubas and the, the fittings, they represent uh, pieces of art which is uh, also more simple in their expression and more original, you can even say, more true to the core of the, the, the weapon, the art of weapons, because uh, as I gradually aroused a larger interest in these Japanese items, there were also set up a production where sword fittings and tsubas were made for the market and not for the warrior. And in this case, we have some very fine examples, which means that some of them, even though they are so exquisite, they really doesn't look like something special uh, because they are, I wouldn't say rustique, but uh, rather rustique. And this also uh, uh, has to do with the material because uh, the basic material when it comes to the tsubas, it's iron. And then we have different kinds of uh, other kinds of metal inlaid or carved out, and it could be gold, it could be uh, copper, it could be uh, silver. And when it comes to these uh, more precious metals, of course, it has to be a kind of alloy because uh, it's too soft itself to be part of the, uh, rather, it should, you, it should be durable when it comes to a weapon. So there are uh, quite a variety in the, in the uh, in the way they are, they are designed and executed. Let me show you a few examples of the rich variety we have in the collection and in the tsubas. Um, a lot of the tsubas have what we call the open work design, which is, this is a very good example of. Here we have a tsuba where we have a very uh, strict, very uh, geometric uh, ornament. It's pure ornamental. It's almost abstract, you can say. And it's like a lot of threads crisscrossing this uh, circular form. Another fine example of this uh, open work design could be this tsuba. Here we see a motif which is apparently almost abstract, but at the same time it has clear natural references because it's, uh, um, 
it's uh, an example of the wave, which is a very uh, essential and uh, used motive in the Japanese art. This is uh, also a wonderful tsuba and uh, one of my personal favorites, among other personal favorites, also because we see so many different uh, elements of technique and uh, motifs here. So we have, uh, also, we have the relief uh, elements. It's uh, really three-dimensional. We have the different kinds of sizzle work and uh, carving uh, in this fine tsuba. Uh, it has a very uh, clear motive because we have the crane, which is uh, one of the favorite um, animals or birds in the, the Japanese uh, tradition. And we have the wave. We have like the sea here. And this is also a good example to show you that a tsuba actually have two sides. Some of the tsubas do not have two sides, or of course they have two sides, but it's not something which has uh, a difference. But here you see on the, the front, we have the crane. We even have the crane, which is covered by inlaid gold. And then if we turn it around, we see the lower part of the crane with the feet also uh, with the gold and uh, continuing with the wave and the sea below. I think we should conclude this uh, Halperstadt uh, collection demonstration by showing some really fine examples of uh, the techniques with the inlaid uh, gold in the tubas. So we here have uh, an example of the open work design and we have uh, the recognizable uh, motive because this is fans also very um, well known as a specific uh, Japanese element in the, we know in, in the Western countries. So it's the fan which itself is a category of art, uh, a decorative art. And uh, you can see here all the tiny, tiny details because within every single fan we have this wonderful uh, chisel work where you see so many details you get almost so humble when you see and recognize this, uh, um, this level of craftsmanship, which is extraordinary. And at the same time here, we have the, the two-sided uh, tuba. And uh, we have also uh, other examples here where you can, uh, for instance, see this uh, tuba, where you see it's... Uh, it's like, a, it's like a landscape, it's like a complete narrative where you see the bridge and you see the, the houses, you see uh, different sorts of trees and uh, everything with wonderful uh, gold uh, technique and so fine details. So it's, um, you really understand how it has had this fascination for people from the Western world because it was like a glimpse into the world of Japan, something which had previously been completely unknown to, to people from the West. So this is really a lovely piece as well. Denmark and Japan has enjoyed diplomatic relations for more than 150 years. We celebrated that back in 2017. This collection of brims is outstanding. It shows that there has been a civil-to-civil -civil, uh, interest uh, between Denmark and Japan for almost as many years as the diplomatic relations. Uh, the collection was started uh, in the 19th century and goes forward. Uh, and it's really uh, one of the great examples of strong ties between Denmark and Japan. It ties uh, the things that we cherish craftsmanship and design together in a very strong way. I hope you'll enjoy this video that explains more about the exhibition.